Hello everybody, my name is Oscar and this is the bonus content for episode 31 of Java Game Development. This is the code we had last video. So it is a demonstration of 2D physics using the JBox 2D library. You can see we can manipulate uh, the box position by clicking the mouse somewhere and then it will be automatically dragged toward the mouse cursor. But we don't have walls and we can't create any other object than this object here. So that's what we're going to be creating in this bonus content video. Firstly, the walls. Now, I recall there used to be something like bodies.add ground here, and that is not necessary. This is really just um, a tangent, but needless to say, this is not necessary because we only want this set to contain dynamic objects, objects that are moving around, so we don't want all our walls to be in here, so we can delete this. Alright, then we are going to create the left wall. So, this is how we are going to do that. Copy this, then replace ground with left wall, replace everything, and then copy the ground back in. So there we go. Now instead of set as box thousand comma zero, we set as box zero comma a thousand. Because now we want the wall to be vertical instead of horizontal. Now we should have a left wall. Let's see if that actually is true. And surprisingly it is so cheers, I guess. Now then, for the right wall, we'll do the same. Copy this. Replace left with right. And then copy the left thing back in. Now, it's still a vertical wall, so we don't need to change anything with set as box. But, we do need to change the position. Now, when I tried this before, I wrote something like 320 divided by 30. And this looks to be, or seems to be, correct. However, it is not. Spot the problem. Okay, so 320 divided by 30 doesn't actually give you a round number. Therefore, you should declare one of these as floats or typecast to float. So what I'm going to do is say 320f divided by 30. Uh, wait, we should just... There we go. See, if you don't do this, something weird happens. I hope it can reproduce, uh, reproduce the error. Let's see, yeah, this happens. And this is because uh, integers can't hold these uh, numbers that float values can. So it ends up being rounded off. And that's not really where the wall is. So this needs to be float. There we go. So now we have the right wall. Show it again. As it is now correct. There we go. Right, left, and bottom walls. Now we need a top wall. So we're going to do the same thing as before. Copy, replace right with top. And copy right back in. Now we need a horizontal wall again, so this thousand should be first parameter and not the second parameter. And the position should be set to zero comma the height in JBox to D space, so 240 F, remember F, divided by 30. All right, now we should have a top wall. I have a bad feeling about this. Please work, please work. Yes, it works. So now we have walls everywhere, and now I'm going to create other objects. Now, we only want to have one controllable object, but we can have different non-controllable... Wait, no, actually, we want every object to be affected by our mouse cursor and by the arrow keys. So, you know, never mind what I just said. How to create objects. Well... 
we are going to check for input in an event driven manner. So we're going to say while keyboard dot next and then if keyboard dot get event key state and then if uh, no let's just switch keyboard dot get event key and let's say case keyboard key C so when we press the C key on our keyboard we want an object to be created and of course break so how are we going to create the object well first we need the position at which we're going to create the object so we're going to say vec2 body position and this we are going to derive from our my, from our mice mouse position i'm sorry so we're going to say new vec2 mouse.getx comma mouse.gety However, this is still incorrect because this is now in window space and we need it to be in JBox 2D space. And if you paid attention in the last video, you would have known that to change uh, something from window space to JBox 2D space, you need to say dot multiply. Firstly, we're going to get it from window space to projection space. So we do multiply by 0 0.5, and then another multiply, and this is going to change it to JBox to the space, 1 divided by 30F. Again, this F is very, very important. If you don't do this, it doesn't work. So that's the position of the body. Now we just need to spawn the body, and we can do this by going to this code and just copying it like that and set the position to the body position there we go so now it should work let's see if it actually does work ah it works ah uh, wait never mind did it yeah it probably just crashed it did concurrent modification exception wow okay how jeez I'm gonna fix this hmm you know what this shouldn't be in here this should be out of this for loop and do we need to add the body to I guess we could just try again here. We need to destroy the old application first. There we go. So one, two, yeah, see this works. I am sorry for this horrible, horrible mistake. You need to put this out of this for loop because you can't actually modify uh, a collection whilst you're iterating over it. My bad, I should have noticed that. So now we can spawn new objects and we can rotate them. We can drag them around like this. Rotate, drag, and we have walls. So that was the bonus content for episode 31. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in episode 20, uh, 20, 32. Bye.